What's going on? Welcome. Welcome. We're over here. The mic is over here. Right. Welcome. <laughs> to the man who's out of breath. I just sprinted from the other building. It's been a busy morning. Exciting projects, changes. I don't give anything away. But some cool stuff going on in the uh, in the north building. Okay. South building. North. South, building. south building. This building. is the south building. South. Yeah, we're, we're in the north. That's yeah. the south. Right? We're up. You're right. I think yeah. so. We're up north. Yes. Welcome to Q&A with Pastor Kim, Pastor Andy, and PG. Excited to have you here with us from that, that side. You usually point when you say that. I do. I, I and then it. I do this. Yeah. And I'm dangling. Dangling. And you're still Glad that you've joined us. I'm going to load it. Feel free to share the stream. This is the point when I always push it over to Pastor Kim. Right. But don't give her any heads up and she has no idea what to say. I know. Say. And then I'll go, Rrr. Okay, so, I will say something, though. Okay, fire. Um... <laughs> Watch for Facebook and Instagram oh. tonight. A little video of a recap this evening of our women's oh, event, our conference cool. last. I was just showing it to Pastor Andy. He liked it. It was great. Yeah. And uh, so you'll get, it, it gives you a flavor, a little bit of what we experienced and all the fun and cool stuff we had. But um, not quite. You have to actually be there to, yeah, different. to really get it. But um Somebody was complaining last night that we had espresso and muffins and donuts instead of bacon like the men. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I know I was like if you put bacon out there, then you got to have <laughs> eggs. And, you know, you got to have the whole oh, yeah. breakfast thing. We were just, you know, making the easy thing. Pick up some muffins, pick well, up some donuts. You guys are doing a lot of dancing. And so you, yes, can, you can only do yes. so many things. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Anyhow, it was a great weekend. Joshua Williams says hello. Carolyn Holbrook says hi. Hello. I'm going to drink some water. Technically, I should not be this out of breath. I think it's evidence of perhaps a, an issue that needs to be addressed. I'm aware of it. My wife is getting smaller, and I am getting... I'm holding, I'm holding steady. There you I'm, go, I was down eight, and I'm back up about three. So I don't know. I'm I'm trying this new thing. It's the life, man. You know the stairs go up, the stairs go down. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a new health kick. What is it? Ma macros. Low glow. Glow glow low low. I see these people on TV all the time that, that lose like a hundred pounds in a day or so. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Called, called low glow or low yeah. glow or something. It's like just that. a pill. Yeah. I, I don't just, know what. They, I think they, just, I think they put a tube down you and it just sucks all the oh, wow. <laughs> everything the out. weight you don't need it's all just, of it out just takes it right away half your intestine one day a lung one day <laughs> and late at night you're it's sitting a little there pricey it's a little pricey one sock hanging off a little <laughs> cheeto down your chin yeah, nothing fits you from that day on nothing right you have to buy a whole new wardrobe throw your questions in here and we will answer them we have i didn't even read some of these we got some should good I, questions should i read these are they good they're actually all good mm-hmm <laughs> Oh, that's good. No bad questions today. <laughs> yes, we get so many bad questions. No, no, we never get a bad Joshua question. must not have sent we his get, in. We then. get some that are very difficult, though. Yeah. He didn't hear me. Did you hear what I said? I heard Joshua. I, I said Joshua must not have sent his in there. Oh, he did. He, he did. did. His, his is, his is a, a little Love complex. Love you, Joshua. Oh, Josh and a complex one. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, Kathy Kiske, what's for lunch today? Um... I have an Atkins bar. What's that bar. new diet thing you were just saying, though? It's yes. uh, you, you dropped ma off. macros. Mac what did, what's that mean? So you eat what? like macaroni and cheese every day? <laughs> <laughs> that would be an I awesome don't, diet. I don't know enough about it to speak intelligently, so I'm not going to try. Okay. But you, you track your macros. And what it's, is a macro? Uh, protein is a macro, a carb is a macro, and a fat is a macro. Uh, so does it just give a fancy name new. to a typical diet? If it, if it fits your <laughs> macro. Just give it a new name. That's what every diet that's ever existed <laughs> is composed of. So you have to balance them. <laughs> with yeah. the that's a diet. <laughs> <laughs> Basically what they told me is if I How eat less. How much did you pay for and, this? <laughs> I haven't paid a dime for it. It's just kind of taking over. And the, the, the craze or the, the catchphrase that goes along with it is if it fits your macro. So when you go to eat something, Man. you go, does this fit my macro? That's a game changer. It, <laughs> <laughs> That's a game changer. If you've never, literally, if literally, you've literally. never been able to lose weight, I, you I, I think it would be the same, like how many carbs do I have left? You in my didn't day? have that phrase. That's uh, why that's no, other, no other plan worked. <laughs> Hashtag, if it fits your macro. <laughs> there it is. Game changer. D Boom. Dave Willis, what's up, brother? Joshua, what's up? 
Miss Karen Michael Pat. Okay, watching from NC. I think we should go ahead and dive in. We're we're uh, yes. Well, how, how far anyway? Let's give another thirty we, seconds. We've had enough fall to roll. No, you don't. You think so? Enough. Yes. Under been enough of it. I yeah. think we give them thirty more seconds. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to have people miss the actual questions, mm -hmm. which is why we we'll, we'll wait till yes. we get have this period have of fall. fall wait till we get to thirty to start. How about that? How's that sound? Miss Kaylee Lambert. Hey, Wes was killing it on Sunday. He was like doing it. He's the man. Okay. We're good. Fire, Pastor Kim. That's a that terrible paradigm. <laughs> there you go. All right. So I'm not upset. I'm musically challenged. Do you want me to start with questions about Sunday's message, or do you not? Oh, like? I, I, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So you can start anywhere you like. All right. This I'll go with this. If we start at the end, it's going to be short, though, right? Mm -hmm. So start at the beginning. Right. That's a okay. very good point. I All pretend, right. Betty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great message this past week. Okay, we can stop right there. Look, let us finish. We can stop right there. Don't cut it off. If there's uh, a but next, I don't want to hear where it's going to go. It goes it's... from there to this has been a great series. Okay. Oh, yes. let I'm, I'm like okay. liking what I'm hearing. But, no, this came up. So this person, uh, this is a message, one of our message groups. So we have growth groups that actually meet right. that week, and they get questions to Talk about the message from the week. It's a great growth group. We have a couple of those. So could you talk a little more uh, in terms of, um, let's say, do you think it's possible, it's about the rewards part. Mm -hmm. Is it possible our rewards could change and or be different? For example, if someone chose to not discover, develop, and deploy their gifts, or they were not a good steward of their time, talent, treasure, just wasted it on frivolous mm -hmm. stuff. Frivolous. That's a great question. Frivolous, fall to roll. Would they mm -hmm. get the same reward as if they had actually pursued their gifts, talents, awaken their dormant capacities. Would you get a trailer if you did nothing but a mansion if you chose to make the most of your time? So instead of answering questions, just goofed off for the entire beginning of the Q&A. What happens then? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, a great question. What is that? Oh, oh, you're eating that bar. I, I had this aroma going by me. You don't know, like it? Am I stinking? Am I stinking? You need a mint? No, it's all right. It's, it's not bad. Like your coffee I smell. Mean, that's it's, it's a rather nat natural, chocolatey mm -hmm. like yeah. smell. Um, okay, the um, <laughs> uh, the answer to the question is is um, as they said that, that it, of course it can change depending upon our faithfulness and um, utilization of gifts, time, talents, treasure, all these kinds of things. The, the answer is yes. And the reason it has to be yes is because reward in the future will be based on proven character. Mm -hmm. um, proven character based on faithfulness with that which God has entrusted to yeah. us. God cannot possibly uh, trust larger responsibilities. And you have to understand, reward in, in eternity is going to take some form of expanded opportunity to serve. Okay, so that, that's really the U-Haul the versus... Say, say, say yeah. it again. Say it again. That's okay. good. Re reward in eternity is going to be expanded opportunities to serve. Okay, yeah. um, He that is greatest among you will be the servant of all. So we, we have to get that in our head. It's not like, I'm not like that. A mansion Trailer or a mansion. Versus, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, unfortunately, in John 14, you know, in, in my father's house are many yeah, mansions. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not meant to picture what we picture, you know what I mean, as, yeah. as a mansion. It, it was, it's literally saying, in my father's house, there are many rooms, many places. Uh, the places are fit for the unique personage. Uh, you know, we all have different tastes, and we've all accomplished various things. Anyway, I don't get into it. But, but Chip and Joanna versus like a boho <laughs> style, mid-century modern. Is that what you're referring to? Not exactly. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I like what this person said that, that can it change? So yes, it can. A person can start off, for example, in their Christian life and be very faithful and very methodical about assessing their gifts, talents, opportunities, you know, all these things and utilizing them effectively. And then they can backslide and they can become lethargic or self-indulgent or all these things that we're warned about in scripture. So that was a great catch. Um, it's how we end at the end of the day. So there was a last part to that, too, that, that uh, I don't think I'm answering. Uh, well, there is a follow-up question. Um, so it was... Um, I know the focus shouldn't be on the rewards themselves, and should we make the most of our time doing as much as we can? Is that what you're referring to? No, I thought of something. Let, let me, while I'm thinking this one point, you, you can read and see if I'm missing anything, Kim. Um, there is something else. When, if you're interested in the subject of reward and, and how it's taught in Scripture, I did a whole Bible institute mm -hmm. 
on it. So if you go to our YouTube page, go all the way to the bottom of the page. I'm not sure what it would be titled. It might be titled Rewards. I'm pretty sure it was Rewards. Yeah. If only we yeah. had somebody that would be able to post it in mm. in the chat on Facebook. If only. If only. Life revolves around a lot of if only. Man. <laughs> you know, in the other room. what if we just were to say, you know how, we, we, we've got one of those systems, the, the Alexa system. You just oh, say, Alexa. 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 Yes. Yeah. Post <laughs> Teaching Institute on Rewards in the chat. Let's see what Technology happens. is so wonderful. Odessa. <laughs> okay. I think you answered did, it. Did I answer you, it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, so the follow-up is, do you think there could be any feelings of regret in heaven? We all hope Jesus hmm. will say, well That's done, good and faithful servant. But I wonder if it's possible that he could say, well, you could have done more. The goal is never to do the minimum. Always try to maximize and get the most out of everything. I just wonder if there will be feelings of, I wish... I met Jesus sooner. I wish I got out of the stand sooner. <laughs> Will we have any of those? It, it's an interesting question um, because it's it's typically been answered in a kind of a matter of fact way. Of course not. There's not going to be anything like no that sorrow. once Christ returns. You know, um, no no sorrow certainly. Mm -hmm. Now what wipe away what every people tear. haven't? Yeah, he's going to wipe away every tear. What people haven't sufficiently, in my opinion, thought about is at least a possibility is that no more sorrow, no more suffering, wipe away every tear. That happens a thousand years after Christ returns. Yeah. I personally feel like there's a, a, a strong possibility, if not a likelihood, that um, we will experience, some of us perhaps, for a long period of time, what I call good grief. Mm -hmm. That there will be some regret. Um, so you got to understand when Christ returns, you know, he kind of establishes his kingdom on earth. Yeah, yeah. Those like, are, give, give us some chronology there. You okay. said a thousand years. That for some people, that you lost them right off the bat. Okay. So go ahead and, there. and this whole thousand years thing, um, it's really easy to understand. If you just read one chapter, if you read Revelation 20, you will see where this thousand years thing is. So Christ returns. He rules and reigns over earth with his people. Things get bad first. They get real bad. Well, before he returns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before he returns, we go into what is called the Great Tribulation period. Um, the Great Tribulation is essentially a three-and-a-half-year period where, where it's intensely bad. And then Christ returns at the end of the Tribulation, sets up his kingdom on earth, and he literally rules and reigns for a literal now, some people want to say that it's symbolic. I don't believe that it is. I think it's a literal thousand years. And um, we will be, all, all who have trusted in God through the ages will be in transformed resurrection bodies. We will be eternal, immortal, indestructible. But I think that from a normal developmental psychological standpoint, it is, it is possible and maybe even likely that we are going to have some of those things going through us because the, the end of the sorrow doesn't come until the end of the mm -hmm. thousand years. Here's something I've experienced personally. Things that, um, that I have regret about, um, the, the regret tends to decrease over time. Doesn't mean it can't be rekindled again. It, mm -hmm. it can, it happens, but it's, even when it's rekindled, it's not quite as intense as when it was. Uh, things, for example, that bothered me from uh, my childhood, I now remember them, but they don't bother me with the intensity that they did. And, that, and I've only yeah. lived a short life. Mm -hmm. Picture a couple hundred years. So a couple hundred years under the rule and reign of Christ. You lost me. Um, well, the, the You've only lived a sh few short years. <laughs> yeah, man. you got to understand, man. You look at that <laughs> an eternal being. Oh, 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 oh. I'm with you now. You're, you're looking at the skin. You don't see the what's inside. Skin. The, the lizard yeah, you're skin. looking at the lizard look, man. You're, you don't see this this spirit inside me that's ageless, ageless, oh, mind I you. I couldn't let it go. I could. I, I lived a short life. Hey, I, I, I want to say you have not hit me with the lizard. We've been uh, we've been dialing the lizard shot. The li lizard shot dialed back a little bit, yeah, a little farther I, I, away. I appreciate that. Yeah, I like to help the humans. Yeah, okay. I, that that rep, reptilian look is not good. It's not. Uh, <laughs> All right, I, I derailed you. Back, okay. back on track here. Okay, so uh, Christ returns, sets up his kingdom for a thousand years. Those that are. Uh, who belong to him, who have trusted in God through the ages, we are in immortal bodies. But we could, we could have some of those very regrets mm -hmm. that that person mentioned. That, oh man, I wish I, wish I would have used my time better. I wish I would have, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that is going to happen. I'm just saying it's possible. But even that will be very reduced to the kind of regret that we experience in, in this life now. Because you're there with Christ. You're there with yeah. your immortal right. family. You're seeing a pristine, a restored pristine earth and, and all these things. 
But on a personal level, that might be because mm -hmm. the, the tears are technically not wiped away until the end of the thousand years. That's in Revelation 21, where it says God creates a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth pass away. Again, if all this stuff sounds really weird to you, all you got to read is two chapters, Revelation 20 and 21, and it'll be crystal mm -hmm. clear for the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. That's it, everything. Yeah. Pretty much. We got anything over there Other than we the go part on? about Satan being released. I hate that oh, part. Yeah, yeah, if you didn't. Um, well, uh, Alexa is broken, apparently, oh. but Joshua was kind enough to post it in there. That took place. Hey, yeah, Joshua. thank you, uh, Joshua. To which Alexa, or the Alexa device. Yes, the device. Alexa device. Uh -huh. The device. Uh, thanked Joshua, and then <laughs> <laughs> Revelation 20 and you know, 21 I'm, was pasted. I'm getting to the place where I, I, I have forgotten the appropriate Pronunciation. Yeah. Joshua. Joshua. Oh, Joshua. Yeah, I'm, I'm like you. I'm Joshua. Uh, Joshua. Uh, well, he's giving Because I called him Josh for so long, as did you, as did everyone. In case oh. anyone is wondering what that's all about. Right. One of my dear friends. Joshua's is name is Joshua. Yes. But, but we called him. He was so kind. He let us call him Josh for years. And then all of a sudden said, but, no, I am now one with the earth. And... No, I, he was he was more uh, uh, wanted to be associated with the biblical character, okay. which I think he probably always said that. But you I'm know, gonna say he we, always we, introduced. We didn't, we didn't hear. As far as I knew, the first Himself time I Joshua. met him, he said, "My okay. name is Joshua." Yeah. Well, I, I worked with an old man one time who called me Ron for a year, and I finally I, I, I corrected him once or twice. After that, I was Ron <laughs> for the rest of the there year. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then there's a question which we can if we get through all the other questions. There's a question about. Uh, christening, big dedication, but we'll, we'll circle back yeah. to that maybe in a little bit. Do you know I was almost Sally? Wow. Yeah. Did you see a Sally? Bad. No, yeah. Sally would not work. No. 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 <laughs> you see, do not look like a Sally. You know, I'm a twin, yes. and then my uncle's birthday, we were born on my uncle's birthday, and his name was Sam, so my parents yeah. considered Sam and Sally. Oh, that, that would have been kind of cool, actually. I don't mind Sally. But Kim and Tim is kind of cool, too, because it's, it's got that ring, yeah. you know, that, that, that rhyming factor. But if you don't want to be rhymy, then you say Kimberly and Timothy. Well, that's still Well, rhymes. still kind of still kind of <laughs> rhymes. it's not Kimberly and Timothy. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Backfired on you. Do you know my uh, all the twins' names in my family? Like, my no. mom and her twin were Wilma Dean and Wanda Jean. Oh, my goodness. And their brothers, amazing. who were twins, twin boys, twin girls, same family, 16 months apart, they were Larry Linville and Gary Glenville. <laughs> what were they? Larry Linville and Gary Glenville. Oh, that's great. Wilma Dean and Wanda Jean. Now, what's wild is then your dad was a twin, And then my too. dad was a twin, but they didn't rhyme at all. They were Daniel Boyd and David Peter. Okay, yeah, no. There's no, no rhyme no in rhyme. there at all. I like the strong name of that last one you brought out with. David Peter. Peter. David, David, you mean? Or? Both. Well, you know, that's my name. Peter David? Is Peter really? David. This is David Peter. Yeah. Well, no wonder you're such a noble soul. No wonder I'm so close to Pastor Kim. Yeah. He's going back. My related. Jessica wanted to have, she has twins that run on her side of her family. Mm -hmm. Twins run on our side of oh, the family. How about that? So she was convinced that she was going to have twins and wanted to name them Ethan and Eden. Wow. Oh. Ethan and Eden. Would Me, you... uh, I, I'm a one and only and almost, I almost wasn't. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah. But God. <laughs> In his grace. Yes. Some, Can you imagine where we'd be say. without <laughs> oh. Pastor Randy's book? That's no. a great segue. <laughs> segue to the into question. Okay, Fire. please. Because someone it's was getting asking, awkward. Getting into that bosom <laughs> stuff again. <laughs> someone in my Abraham's group bosom. <laughs> last night, Robin, she was like, Pastor Randy will talk about you know his past life and how bad he mm -hmm. was, and then at 23 was your conversion. But mm -hmm. she's like, but what actually happened at 23? How did you come to Christ? Like, what was that experience oh, like? Like, oh. you go from this lifestyle, then, you know. Instantly, without oh. sin. <laughs> instantly, <laughs> completely mature. Oh. It wasn't a developmental process at all. <laughs> no, no, not, not whatsoever. No. <laughs> it was instantaneous. Struck with blindness, yeah. beamed from heaven. That yeah. was it. Knocked off his horse. That was it. That Pretty was much saw. Yeah, I was the only guy in the area that had a horse uh, in those uh -huh. days. So. Do you remember that? You know, in the flannel graph, <laughs> he's always knocked off of his horse. So, uh, Paul, you never. I never did the flannel graph thing, man. Yeah. I became a Christian at age 20, 23. They didn't show flannel graphs to 23 year olds, you know. <laughs> Not even the most traditional churches <laughs> yeah, had, had abandoned at that point. The, <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, okay, so since he's, he's asking about my conversion and, and, yeah. and try to reduce this down as the challenge. Uh, okay. 
Um, as stupid as this is going to sound, okay. Uh, by age 23, um, I, f I felt like an old man in my soul. I felt like I had been everywhere, done everything, and everything was getting old. Everything was getting boring. I was love starved, um, terrified of being alone. My only real family were my friends. And yet the way we were living and things we were doing, um, the, the guilt and self-loathing was starting to accumulate with me. I don't know about them, but with me. And, and then a series of things started happening. So, I, so I'm thinking about my life and I'm projecting the future. Where am I going to be? What, is this what it's going to be like? We used to hang at this pool hall called uh, Guys and Dolls Pool Hall down in PG County. And when everything else was shut down for the night, that place was open all night long. And I'm telling you, the scum of the earth hung in that place. And, but we loved it because we were just young jitterbugs. And real, real gangsters were in that place. And we liked rubbing shoulders with real mm. gangsters. Made us feel bad, you know. You used Tough. jitterbugs and gangsters in the same sentence. <laughs> yeah, it shows my age. You know, you <laughs> just, 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 just to be clear. <laughs> that's what, jitterbugs. That's what, okay, back in my day, that's what young blood street street people were called by the older real gangsters. They called us young blood wannabes, little jitterbugs. We, we, wow. We had not arrived. We had not done enough to get the full reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we would hang out at this place, and I remember... Uh, as I'm contemplating this stuff about my life and feeling very, very restless, and I'm thinking, well, I could be like Angelo, and I'm picturing all these older guys that were at Guys and Dolls, and, <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be there. So anyway, uh, I used to eat out a lot in those days. I was doing construction work then, and I was at this steakhouse. I used to have real long hair in those days. We were the original true hippies, you know, so we had long hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm eating at this steakhouse, and this guy comes up to me, and he gives me what I now know to be a, a gospel track. Mm -hmm. And so he was, you know, just here, you know, this is something for you or God's giving you something. I don't remember what his exact words were. So I take this gospel track. I didn't say anything back to him, but I kept that thing. And um, I took it home and I kept it for six months. While that was occurring, at nighttime, I would go home. Now, now some of you, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna know my age now when I tell you this. When I would go home at, late at night, uh, this is, Let's say I'm home between 12 and 1 o'clock in the morning. Television, as we know it, would go off the air. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, off the air. There, there weren't so many Start stations. You, lo you lost me. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Television. That's when the really good stuff comes on. Yeah. Okay, okay. I when you Robert Tilton comes I, on. I kid you not. You had in those stations. God, it works it out. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You, you had four, five, seven, and nine. If you could get Baltimore stations, you could get 11 and 13. And then eventually you had uh, ultra high frequency, channel 20. And mm -hmm. So anyway. You bunny ears? You got like bunny ears? Oh, yeah. Bunny ears, circular ears, all kinds of ears we had in those days. Anyway, TV would go off. And, mm -hmm. and then this, this test pattern would come on the screen and just pss, static until mm -hmm. the next morning when TV would come in. But what would happen often is just before TV went off, these religious broadcasts would come okay. on air. And I started secretly watching these religious broadcasts. I wasn't telling my friends, anybody I was running with, but I'm thinking about everything, man. I'm thinking, so um, as time goes on, I started thinking, I don't know, maybe, maybe God is the answer, you know? Not, nothing else is making sense to me. Life doesn't make sense. I, I don't care about money. I don't care about a lot of things that people chase. Right around when this happened, these buddies of mine were in a band, and I used to go to the bars with them and help them balance out their sound. He doesn't think I can hear, but I have very, <laughs> very good musical hearing. He doesn't all, think I can all, hear. All, <laughs> hearing. So, uh, so is, is it possible that in the last 50, uh, 20 years, <laughs> yeah, you're hearing Perhaps. Perhaps. I've lost he doesn't little, think I can I hear. I lost a little step. Perhaps. A little bit of your anyway, fire. Anyway, uh, I, I, I would go with them, help them balance out their sound and like that. But what I would do is I would go to the liquor store before I went there because beer was expensive in the bars. So I'd get a six-pack of beer, drink some on the way, then go in there with them and on breaks and smoke a joint, drink a beer, and back and forth. Anyway, I'm going to this liquor store in, um, in Marlow Heights, Maryland. Some of you would know where that is in PG County. And I see this kid probably about, every time I relive this thing. So this kid... I hope he's alive somewhere today, because uh, he has haunted me ever since I was probably 22, 23, maybe I had already turned 23, I don't remember, it wasn't summer. Anyway, this kid's standing out in front of this liquor store, and he's handing out these booklets. Well, I had already received one in the steakhouse, so I knew what they were, and uh, he's stopping people, though. He's talking, you know, to full-grown adults going to the liquor store. So I tried to avoid him, and, and I couldn't. He got in front of me, and I just kind of 
cussed him and, you know, got around him. Went and got my beer and didn't think any more of it, had my night. But when I got home that night, man, <laughs> um, that kid haunted me. And he, he frankly haunted me the rest of my life. For whatever reason, that gave me the clearest picture of, of what a monster I was becoming. Um, there was a lot of other reasons why, and I'm not going to go into that, but I, I was just doing an awful lot of things that no, nobody should do. But that, the way I treated that kid who was so good made me realize <clears throat> how evil I was becoming. All right, with all that going on and I'm thinking about life, I finally came to the conclusion <clears throat> maybe God is the answer. So I'm terrified of God because I don't know anything about him. And I'm thinking, but surely if anybody has probably done something that causes you to be forever rejected by mm -hmm. him, I, I might have done that. So I'm scared to death. At the same time I'm attracted I get a Bible. I start reading the Bible. Um, I get Where'd you go get a Bible? Just curious, like just... Gee, that's a good question. Because, I mean, you probably would have had to go to a Christian bookstore, right? I mean, I, I, I believe I, I believe I might have yeah, because there okay. were Christian bookstores in, uh, in Camp Spring. There was a Christian bookstore, but I don't remember okay. where I got the Bible. Um, anyway. Hotel? Nah, nah, man, mm -hmm. nah. Anyway, got the Bible. I'm reading the Bible. Um, you know, you can't learn a lot at first, but I was learning enough that I saw God was kind and, and he seemed merciful, forgiving. Um, so I ended up taking, you know, th this went on for a while. I'm still watching religious broadcast. I'm not telling my friends anything. Um, I ended up taking a whole week off of work, which in those days was not a big deal. I, I'd work a while and take off for a while, you know. <laughs> but I took a week off and lost a job. Um, and I just locked myself in my little townhouse there on Iverson Street. In, uh, in Marble Heights, Maryland, and, and I read the Bible almost nonstop, you know, just other than sleeping, and I knew I had to do something. I had to either go with this guy or not, and I keep projecting what my life would be like back and forth, back and forth. Long story short, I made my decision to uh, trust Christ, become his follower. Didn't have the language for that mm -hmm. in those days, but let me tell you, that I was all in from day one. Your heart had shifted. Oh, man. And... Um, so then, you know, I stutter step for a while because... Can I, can I pause you? Yeah. Well, where did you read? Where did you start reading the Bible? Do you remember? I don't. I don't, Pete. I, I really don't. Okay. And I think I was kind of skipping around. and uh, But but I got enough out of it to know that, that there was mercy with God and that, that the okay. deal was about becoming a, a, a le aligned allegiance to, to Christ and that sort of thing. Okay. I, didn't have, I didn't have the language that I have today to put with it. Uh, but I knew, I knew one thing, that, that I was going to now have to belong to Christ, and, and I had to be willing to do what He wants me to do and live the way He wants me to live. So the trust was there, and I, I immediately connected the trust with the obedience. I mean, that was, that was obvious to me that I had to change, you know. Mm -hmm. So I finally ratcheted up my nerve and told my friends. Um, I bet they really encouraged you. <laughs> <laughs> well... What they did was just laugh at me. They, uh, oh, Randy's flipped out on the Bible now. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, I don't blame them. I mean, their thought was probably, yeah, this will last two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but it's lasted a little longer than two mm -hmm. weeks, I would say. So what I did for a while, though, was I was kind of half-stepping in. I, I thought, okay, I was terrified to lose my friends. I'm going to still hang out with my friends. I'm going to still party with them, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to smoke dope anymore. You know, I'm just going to I'm just going to be there. Um, that didn't work out, you know. Mm -hmm. within, yeah. a, within a couple of months, I, I was drinking again, smoking some some marijuana and that kind of thing. And so, I remember going home from a party uh, and thinking, I can't do this. It's got to be all or nothing. That was probably within two months, mm -hmm. and that was the demarcation point where you know I I started following Christ completely. Had to break off with my friends, which was terrifying. And, uh, and then the rest has just been a, um, a journey. Now, let me go back. The guy that gave me the track in the restaurant, mm -hmm. I kept that track, I said, and uh, on the back of it was an was a ink print of a church. Okay. It was the first church that I ended up going to, and it was a hoot, man. And you got to picture this. I got this hair down the middle of my back, you know, and this is when bell bottoms and all that stuff were in vogue. So I f I'm looking for this church, looking, looking, looking. It's in Camp Springs, Maryland. I can't find it, man. I'm looking for, you know, like the steeple and everything. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm in a neighborhood. I'm like, oh, that's the address. It's a house. It's a house. Mm, it's yeah. a house. I see. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know about this. 
So I'm here. So I go to the door. I go. This guy's name was Russell West. He had a church that met in his basement. It consisted of his family and me. <laughs> I love it. And I me. love it. Uh, anyway, uh, it was my first experience. And uh, Ru Russell West, he was a piece of work, man. He, uh, it, I, I was there for about six months. And this is going to sound a bit arrogant, but I was, I was constantly studying the Scripture. Within six months, I was already discerning that a lot of the stuff Russell was preaching didn't line up with Scripture. Yeah, yeah. And I was having conversations with him that were not pleasing to him, I'm sure. you know. Uh -huh. And um, so from there, I went and searched out another church and uh, ended up in this Baptist church um, that, I, that I found out about on the radio, Pastor Roy Stewart, who took me under wing and mm -hmm. changed my life. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I didn't sit here and fall through this whole thing. I don't want to do that. Uh, anyway, that that's what's kind of the track. Okay. You know, I don't want to take too much more time. So you think if you stop talking, you'll stop crying? Is that the thought process? Yes, because something funny <laughs> will be said. <laughs> and I'll, I use levity. You see what I do? You do, you do. I use a do you know that? I you like did, that. Have you, have you noticed that I can also? You do use the levity. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is when you, you use levity accidentally. In a message, you'll share something that um, you I'm not sure. I mean, sometimes you plan it, but then sometimes you'll say something that just kind of spills out and cracks everybody up. You, you so share. Those are always always the better humor moments when More. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 they land better, don't they? Than they, they, the, they when, they than when you plan to. them. Yeah, when you plan them yeah. and then they don't work, it's like, oh no. What Were you an I, Ernest Angley fan? <laughs> Dave Willis says that Ernest Ainsley had me before wrestling came on. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Ernest Ainsley is a hoot, man. He, yeah. he, uh, he, he was a piece of work. I don't sure. know him. You're oh, kidding. really? He was I don't think so. Robin Williams used to do an impression of him. That's how famous he was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like a televangelist kind of guy? Yes, he was mm -hmm. a televangelist. Okay. Oh, yeah, healer. He wore this... this, this Hat well, now wig. I gotta, now I got to look him up. Yeah. His wig, his wig was so cheap it looked like a hat sitting oh, up. Oh, he his wore head. a piece. Yeah, and uh, and he was healed. He would do this thing with his fingers <laughs> like you need to be healed. He was from Ohio and he had this real uh, hillbilly accent. I probably offended everybody around offended me. Offended me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, anyhow. I'm gonna go to another anyhow, go, question. Go to another question. Okay. Because yeah. this Annette sent this in. She's done a spiritual gifts test, and one of the gifts that she came out with was prophecy. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I know prophecy had been fulfilled, and prophecy's not about mind reading. Or um, I know that all prophecy had been fulfilled. I think, you know, in terms oh, of prophecies Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he, he was a hoot, man. He, he died recently. Uh, he, he lived, I think, mm -hmm. to be almost 100. Wow. Sorry, Pastor yeah. Tim. Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, it's the gift of prophecy. I, I, and I was listening. Well, well, I was listening what is to your the, question. You know, when it comes, there's prophecies in the yes. Bible and the fulfillment of Christ and so forth, but the yeah. gift of prophecy, what's that about? Um, again, uh, I, like everybody else alive today, we can only speculate about this. There's people that want to speak authoritatively about it, but they're not being honest. We'd, we'd all like to know more than we do about it. But, but what I believe is that uh, we today, because the revelation that God has given to us has been complete, we have the Bible, God has no need to say any more to us right now. So how prophecy or the gift of prophecy functions today, I believe, is, is God gives certain people with the gift of prophecy, they study His Word, and they are then given the ability to relevantly communicate it within a context of, of a, a circumstance that's present. So, so it's taking the truth, the principles of the Word of God, and being able to see how it applies to your direct circumstances that you're in. Um, some people will add to it that it often takes a corrective flair to it. I don't think that's necessarily so because 1 Corinthians 14 says it is to build people up. But, but that's my spin on it today. I do not believe that God is giving prophecy today to people because that means, uh, don't get me wrong, they're people, sincere good people. They're my brothers and sisters in Christ for the most part probably. Um, and they'll stand up in churches and they'll say, Thus saith the Lord, and they think they're getting a prophecy. They have a, a thought that goes through their mind. They believe it's God. Uh, I don't believe it's God because that would be adding to Scripture. Okay? Hmm. Now, what I, what I do believe is that God can put an idea in our heads. And, and so, what I've always been cautious about because I'll talk this, I'll say, You know, I, I've got this thought. I'm not saying that, that God's speaking directly, but. 
But I, I, if this helps any, this is something that the guy just brought to my mind. I don't know. I'm just going to share it with you. It might just be because I ate too much last night or something. But it, and a hoagie. Here's what's on my mind. Yeah. yeah. And, and I just feel it's, it's safer to do that because what we don't want to do is start messing around with the foundation of Scripture. When, when you start, we had this conversation recently about um, people that, in trying to be too uh, all things to all people, undermine the foundation of Scripture, and they're doing a disservice to people. They're, they're not helping them. They're trying to help them. They're trying to be all things to all people. But when you undermine Scripture, you're doing the greatest disservice. So uh, that, that's my opinion. You know, there's others that have a different spin on that. But I, but I think it is a prophetic, I think it's a gift that God gives people but the way I think it shows itself is these abilities to have insight that may not seem uh, normative. It might be more of an intuition kind of a thing. It's based on what you've learned from Scripture. And then the ability to articulate something to someone that, that they find uniquely, immediately helpful in, in their circumstance. You know, If you're a teacher or preacher, you may utilize this gift inadvertently the whole time you're teaching and preaching. But people will, will get a sense that God is speaking to them, that it's relevant to, to them and their circumstances now, that, that's the way I see it. You know. Will God contradict um, Scripture with a prophecy? And I'm glad you, you, and I know where you're going with that. Absolutely not. That's the acid test. And unfortunately, often when people believe that they're getting a prophecy, it, it's rarely tested for accuracy. Because the Old Testament gave a test, uh, Deuteronomy 18, that, that if uh, a prophet says something and it doesn't come 100% true, it's not from God, you know. Mm -hmm. So it would never contradict Scripture. It will always be, be accurate and fulfilled if the person is giving a pr prophetic future um, word. I, I'm, I'm very skeptical of those things. I've seen too many of them that that are given to people and they never come to pass and, and they're inaccurate and they and they do sometimes even contradict scripture. You know, yeah. so. Now, having said that, I want to give one word of caution. When, uh, when we enter into the last, last times, when, when we're entering into the period just prior to the return of Christ, it could be, it could be that circumstances will be so dire and we won't have the ability to get to scripture with the comfort and ease that we have now, it, it could be that God will activate um, supernatural guidance. But but God doesn't do superfluous miracles. Uh, I mean, he, he does them for reasons. And so there's no reason, in my opinion now, to be given these prophecies because you're not going to say anything that's different from what the Bible already says. And if the Bible already says it, why do I need you standing up and saying, thus saith the Lord? Every one of these prophecies I've ever heard, every witness, they're always so innocuous. It's like, thus saith the Lord, my people, Oh, know that you are on my heart day and night. Know that you are my beloved. You are the apple of my eye. You are my treasured possession. Well, I can read that in the Bible. You know, I don't, I don't need you to pop up and say that. It's nice. It's a nice thought. And, and maybe God just laid it on your heart that you, you want to comfort God's people. But don't go saying that it's a prophecy because now you're saying that God is speaking directly to you and through you, which means your word is equal to the Bible, as opposed to, mm. you know, I just got something on my heart. I think God laid it on my heart. I don't know, but can I just share it with you? That's different. That's I've heard different. you. I've heard you share that before. So that's a cool distinction you just drew there. I've, I've wondered that because I've heard you say, you know, even when I'm prepping to speak, you know, I give you kind of a topic and walk through a verse, and you'll say, well, just just get alone with God, and He'll speak to you, and kind of mm -hmm. bring this bring this to light. So the the distinction of prophecy that you feel feel like gets odd. Can you talk about the difference between God speaking to someone and giving them, um, uh, I'll use a Bible college word, a census plenty or, or a fuller meaning of of Scripture versus giving uh, an interpretation or a, a prophetic? Are you are you referring to a prophecy as this is going to happen? Because I've heard exactly what you said, yeah. where somebody feels like this is a word that someone needs to hear. You would not call that prophecy. You would call that an encouragement. or Yes, and, 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 and I'm a stickler on the way they say it. If they want to stipulate that this is a prophetic word, well, my ears perk up. man. I'm like, now you're saying that God is now speaking real time directly to you like he did Isaiah or Paul or... And, and he's speaking through you, which now means what you are about to say is equal to the Bible. I don't, I don't okay. accept that. Okay. God could put an impression on somebody's heart, and it still may be very much a supernatural occurrence. You know, the Spirit of God, you know, I, I, don't, I hope I don't offend you, but, but God just kind of laid on my heart. I just want you to know that 
uh, God led me to come to you and say, you are so special in his sight. I mean, I mean, you know, it might be something like that. That's legit. That, that's still the activity of the Spirit of God, but it's not something where someone is saying, thus saith the Lord kind of thing. Your other illustration that, that I do believe with all my heart is we go to God and seek him through the Scripture. He will take his word and start to expand it, and he'll start mm -hmm. to illuminate us, and he'll start to utilize, stimulate our imagination. And, and as we uh, meditate more and more, what we didn't see, what we saw initially was like this, it will get like this, and then it will start opening up to applications and, and all kinds of things. And anybody that communicates or teaches it has a kind of gifting, you know exactly yeah. the experience I'm talking about. But so I don't consider that to be prophecy. Okay. I, I think that's, that accompanies a, a teaching gift, and it's the, the <coughs> merciful, um, illuminating work of the Spirit. That, now, it can be uh, a prophetic gift in that the Spirit of God uh, illuminates us so that we can make a present day application um, that will be prophetic to some but but it, but this but it's not God speaking directly as he did you know to the prophets um, and so well, one of the things says Ephesians 2 it says that the foundation of the church the local church which means you know the assembly of God those who trust him it's laid on the apostles and prophets once you lay a foundation okay you don't keep adding foundation Mm. This is why I'm going to say something here that, that some would disagree with, and, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't believe that there are any apostles today. The foundation has been laid. Revelation talks about the 12, the, the names of the 12 foundations. You told city. me to call you Apostle Goldenberg. Was that <laughs> Bishop Apostle <laughs> no. Goldenberg? No. Did I misunderstand that? Apostle Bishop. You got Apostle it, you Bishop. Got, you got it back. Ah. <laughs> so, um, now, now, some would say there's a secondary use of apostle in the New Testament, and that is absolutely true. When you read through some of the list where Paul is saying goodbye to people, he'll yeah. throw some people in there as apostles. In, in the, the apostle simply means, you know, I, I'm a sent exactly. one. God has appointed yeah. me and sent me out. Yeah. Some of them, but there is a distinction of apostle, and Paul even talked about in 2 Corinthians 12 about the signs of an apostle. Okay, apostles t technically were those that. Um, walked with Christ and saw the resurrected Christ. Paul did not walk with Christ, but he saw the resurrected Christ. That seems to be the biblical criteria, as well as signs and wonders that accompany, that validate their um, apostleship. Is that the way you say it? Yeah, apostleship. Yeah, apostleship. Yeah. Um, so, uh, foundation. When the foundation is laid, the apostles and prophets, you build from that. So, we, we are the recipients of the foundation. Um, we now have the entire Bible. And so we are to go to that foundation, and we learn, and, and you know we, we build from there. You know, so Do, can someone have an, an or are we doing okay, Pastor Kim? Yeah, we, just, we do gifting? have one more good so, question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe with all my heart. But and here again, let me, let me say, it's, it's just like someone, a prophetic gifting. There's a, a second level, I believe, that's applicable today. So an apostolic gifting today would be someone like um, they oversee a, a network of churches. Okay. And they go to them periodically for corrective and encouragement and guidance. So yeah, yeah. kind of like a lot of people in in, in missionary um, circles, yeah. you, you might have a cycle or, or a whole series of churches that that you're overseeing and you're making sure they stay healthy and that kind of thing. So I, I think yes, an apostolic um, gifting. I, I think so. Yeah, and again, there's nothing that we can nail this stuff down, but I think it's a safe application. Mm -hmm. Your your biggest concern, jumping back one topic. Jumping back to prophecy, the biggest concern is people attempting to give authoritative, yeah. uh, authoritative guidance that yeah. you feel like is, is supposed to be equal with with uh, the authority of Scripture. Yeah, and, and even um, uh, authority for your 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 role or rank. Uh, I, I'm very uncomfortable when certain pastors will speak uh, as though they deserve authority. If you've got to speak about it, you probably don't have it. Right. But but um, I was laughing a minute ago because um, back when we were at Ballinger, we, mm -hmm. we had this guy come through, and he waited around to the end of the service. And he said, I'm going to introduce myself to you. He's very formal. He says, uh, I, I'm the Apostle Michael. I said, oh, wow. He says, and, and I need to have a word with you. He says, uh, I see see what you're doing here. And you have some fellows on that stage that, you know, on your band, and, and they have long hair, and, and I do not approve of that. You know what Scripture says. And so... You, you've got to stop that. And, they, and he, he addressed a couple other things. And I said, well, well thank you. I said, now, you need to know, 
I don't believe you're an apostle. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to take serious anything you said. But so you just, now, now what would you do? Probably the same thing. Would you? I probably would. Yeah. So you, was, I feel like you've gotten softer. I feel like you'd be well, like, oh, I'd, I'd be, I'd be more gentle probably than what I was then. That's for sure. Because there was an interaction with somebody on Sunday after service. I'll be vague on purpose. Okay. And I remember thinking, like, I was. Well, trying I was to, entertained. I was trying to pull you away from <laughs> I know, it. I, I wanted to be well, like, thank you. I always want you to watch out for me. I appreciate that. I really do. But this, um, this person was bossing yeah, you around and yeah. giving you instructions, and you were like, but okay. I was, amused, I was amused by oh, it. I'll tell you. After. It was so. Outrageous, right? It was, you saw it. Well, it was a little. It, it was. It was so outrageous. I just was like, I was entertained. I was like, where is this going next? You know. Right. But you were very kind. You yes. were very kind her the entire time. Yes. And, and I, there was I hope nothing. I tried to be. Actually, I think our, one of the guys I, watching. I, think I was kind of Apostle Michael. <laughs> That's what I was saying. You, I wanted you to know that you're not an apostle. I feel like that. You feel like you'd have been softer now. I feel like you might have said that. No, nah, maybe Probably. not. Probably. We had another lady that, that snuck up on stage, and I've told this story before, scared the wits out of me, man, because we had just had a jumper on the stage uh, two or three weeks <laughs> earlier who was a pretty violent guy. Uh, but this lady, uh, I'm, my eyes are closed. <laughs> I'm praying. And I don't know how she did it. She crept up on stage, and there she was right beside me. I was like, what the <laughs> heck? Because I just had a guy weeks earlier jump on stage and, you know, want to knock, assault, yeah, knock yeah. me out. Yeah. So uh, she tells me, she says, I, I'm here because God wants me to say thus and so and the other to your church. And I said, oh. I said, okay. Uh, Wait, into the microphone? No, no, no. I'm just talking personally to her now. I said, it's okay, but I want so you to the know. band playing? What's, you got to give me more context yeah, here. I think it was kind of a weird silence. Okay. Because I just yeah, did my just closing hear prayer. Between okay. the two. Yeah, but I, and uh, what I said, I said, no, God didn't tell you that. He didn't tell you that he wants you to say so much church. And here's why I know. He would have told me first. Uh, I put my arm around and said, but that's okay. Let's just get off stage. <laughs> I just walked her off stage. <laughs> she was in this little little house in the prairie dress, man. She, she was harmless as could be. She, she meant well, yeah. Pastor Kim was trying to shut us down like two hours ago. That's all right. Do you want to check anything? Is there anything Oh, there's all kinds maybe? of stuff flying in here. All kinds Did of stuff. Did we cover all those, all the questions? We got one more to talk. People okay. would love to see a picture of you with your hair. No. I have asked for that multiple times. Dave, yeah. do you know the interaction that we are referring to? I think the answer is yes. Annette says, thanks, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> Nanette Hipkins? Do you know that, that person? Uh, uh, yes. What did she say? Uh, gave, she, she's, been, she's been putting in Bible verses. Oh, okay. So Matthew 7, 3. The type of prophecy that doesn't line up with Scripture only edifies the person claiming to speak a prophecy. If it lines up with Scripture, it contains godly wisdom and it glorifies God. Yeah, Dave Willis, it appears as though he does remember that moment. Thank you for saying so much today. It's very encouraging. This is from Miss Kathy Kedney. It's very encouraging to hear about finding God, seeking Him, and walking with Him. God always seems to use your teaching in perfect timing. Let her finish. Let her finish. Don't cut her off. Okay, last question here. Right. This is also from my growth group last night because someone just said, she was like, I was reading Matthew. Can you all help me with this? Okay. Um, Nicole. So Matthew ten fifteen. So, um you know, for her reading it, she was like, he just sounds so angry, and I don't understand why in the comparison. So it says this. Uh, he's sending out the apostles. Oh, oh, if any okay. household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake shake its dust from your feet as you, ha as you leave. Yep. But then he goes on. I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. Yeah. So, like, Yikers. Like, yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's, it's a good question, and it has to be taken... Um, in its historical context especially. So here's the Messiah. The Israelites have been waiting for the Messiah 1,500 years. He's now arrived. These are his sent spokesmen. Okay, He is sending them out to announce the kingdom has come, the king is here, and you know he, he's revealed himself as being kind and merciful. He's done all kinds of miracles. Everybody knew about it. He never asks anything. He just gives. So here's this full revelation of God that was being given to humanity but especially to the Jews who should have recognized him. Mm -hmm. And when they are going out and proclaiming him and his kingdom, Jews again, who, who were saturated in scripture and waiting for the Messiah and the Messianic kingdom, they of all people should have recognized him. Uh, Jesus said something uh, in the gospels. He said, to whom much is given, much will be required. The Jews were given much. They were given mm -hmm. the scriptures, the full revelation of God, the expectation of the Messiah, the Messianic kingdom. 
So when he offered himself to that generation, and when they saw what they saw, and the apostles were given uh, miracle working power to validate their testimony as well, and the people saw that and still rejected Christ, his kingdom, his revelation of God. Here, here's God who has been hidden away, given fragments of himself through his word through the 1500 year Israelite history, but now he shows up in person. Hmm. And he's vulnerably saying, here I am, what do you think of me now? Do you like me now, in essence? Mm -hmm. And they're like, we're not that interested. Why? Because they wanted a political Messiah that was going to change them in their exterior circumstances, not a real Savior Messiah that was going to save us from our great danger, which was sin, self-indulgence, selfishness, distrust of God, disregard for God, and all these things. So the reason those cities were going to be judged, or, or there's, and, and the reason why the apostles first of all were told to shake the dust off their feet, Jesus knew he had limited time. Mm -hmm. uh, he knew this was a three and a half year deal, and he's sending out to announce to the Jews then, so they had to go quick, and anybody that was not, not interested, don't even bother with them. Mm -hmm. Don't try to yeah. persuade them. Don't waste your time. Go to the next city. There's going to be recipient people. Find the recipient people. Your time is limited. This is not a principle we carry over exactly today, but it does have a guidance component to it. Um, I have always believed that there are too many Christians that waste far too much time, in some cases decades of their life, trying to reach one person who is not likely ever to be reached, and they, they could, have, could have invested that energy in tons of other people that would have been receptive, but they're just, they're just stuck. You know, I gotta reach you know, my uncle or my brother or whatever it is, and they do it with that voice too. And, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and as far as the judgment of the cities, it's because to whom much is given, much is required. They were given this, this magnificent revelation of God, annunciation of the kingdom, and they were just being not nonchalant. Yeah. And so that's why he said, you know, hey, Sodom and Gomorrah are going to do better than you because Sodom and Gomorrah did not receive that kind of a revelation mm -hmm. of God. They didn't have a Bible at all. Um, the closest thing they had was just Lot's presence and his dismay at their, their conduct, which Second Peter tells us about. Yeah. So. Good. I answered her properly. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I, like, I gave an answer, which was about the Messiah, full revelation stuff, too. And then I was like, but I'm going to ask Pastor Randy, just in case I'm missing something here. So. But there is an application. And Jesus said something else one time. He said, don't uh, throw your pearls before swine. swine. Mm -hmm. And again, it had a particular intense application at that time. The kingdom was being announced, the kingdom was being offered, the king was mm -hmm. present. But it still has an application now, too. And, and when, when you are trying to share truth with people, and they become uh, what I would call obnoxiously disrespectful for the truth, then I have made a practice of years, that's it, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk anymore, you know. And uh, I'll talk at any time in the future mm -hmm. if you're going to be serious and respectful. But this is too precious for me to let you disregard it and act as though this isn't the most right. important thing uh, the human beings can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't keep going back to people that are just going to mock and ridicule. Uh, you know, you can keep praying for them, but yeah. I don't throw your pearls before swine. It's it's something valid. Yeah, it's intense. We've gotten somber and intense. Yeah, I know. And my stomach is growling. I'm yeah, so my hungry. My mind was too. I was hoping this thing didn't pick it up. Yeah, yeah. I heard it. Well, I know you. You, you, it, you it have made that me, good hearing. That it made me uncomfortable. You, you have bat. You have bat ears. <laughs> and on that note, yes, there was another question that came. Actually, two other questions that came in in the chat. We'll answer them next week. Come back, and I think her name was Sue. I missed who. who what the, what the name? It wasn't was. Susie Q? Was it? No. You know, it was. That's a cool song, wasn't uh -huh. it? <laughs> Sue Strasburg. Creedence Clearwater Revival. That's who did that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. John, uh, John, what was his name? John. He's an amazing Q. Lennon. Yeah, Su no, 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 no. Susie Q is a Creedence Clearwater Revival. Um, uh, CCR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his name, the main dude, John. The Baptist. Oh, no, no, no. He, he's an amazing musician, singer, all that kind of thing. Anyway, he know, sure it was like wasn't. The Everly Brothers sure or something. Su Susie no? Q, man, that was, that was a bad song. That thing, it's just, it's one of those songs that just went on and on and on. It's just Susie cramped. Susie Q, and I don't know if I know that song. I, I could sing it for you. Go Come on, you, you would not give recognize it. it. Give, you would not recognize it. Give me something. Give me a little something. No, I, can, just, yeah, just, I can't give anything. Just like poetically no, no, say no, no, no. it. I don't have it and I know it. <laughs> we just if just I had it, I would just like if it was like Lue, Lue, I. 
Oh baby, you gotta look it up. Go. Get, look, look, look it up and listen to it. Get get yeah. John Fogerty. That's his name. Get oh, John John Fogerty. John Fogarty's, he, he was the lead guy. Uh, Creed is clear word. John genius genius. Fog- John Fogerty. F O G A R T Y. Fogerty. Susie, Susie Q. Susie Q. That's a bad number, man. And that thing cranks and cranks, man. <laughs> Brings back a lot, bad, of bad, a lot of bad party yeah. experiences back in my mind. Susie Q. <laughs> I remember one in particular. We almost took a terrible beating because of that song. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. There's more to that story than you're going to share here. Yes. But when you when we turn this off, I'm going to get the whole story. All right, here it is. We're going to see it. We're going to hear a little bit of it. Oh, that's us, that's us, that's us, that's us talking. Boom, 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 boom. I can give you the bass track. That's the See, what, what happened? You could... uh, the bass will kick in. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, he's going to talk, man. 50 years since the song was made. Oh, that's a There old. it is. <laughs> oh, and it just goes and goes and goes. <laughs> yeah. Do you have to make that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you have to make that face the when face. you're a rock star. Yeah, you have to. Sounds exactly like it. He's weathered fairly well. I mean, he obviously, he's 50 man, years older. As a, as a vocalist, still, he's he still, still, he's still he, got yeah. a little bit. He's still got it, man. And on that man, incredibly man. secular and inappropriate... Uh, uh, drop in from us. We're gonna. Oh, I missed. Hit him, hit him one. Hit you hit him one. We will see you on Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, that was close. Nine fifteen and eleven fifteen. You're an athlete. Come on, pull it together. I'm not gonna throw this because I was wiping my nose with it. Yeah, hey, I'm joining pull. the pickleball club. There. Uh, this Sunday. Club some, Sunday. Club Sunday. Clubs sign up. Um, this is. These are different than growth groups. They have kind of a. Fun. A, 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 uh, a fun aspect to them. Which Not that the you. growth groups aren't they're fun. fun. They're, they're fun in a different Mine's way. Fun. Plan to join, be a part. We'll see you on Sunday, 9, 15, 11, 15. We love you. Great things happen at FCF. See you on Sunday. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>